Hello everyone, in this video I want to give you some tips on how to approach the role plays and picture stories element of the German oral exam. Now before I do that, I want to just say a word about the order or the general structure of the oral exam. As you probably know already, I've covered the general conversation part of the exam in these uh, two videos here, oral one and oral two. And this video is about sections two and three. Section two is the, will be the picture stories and section three is the role plays. Now, what is the order of the exam like? How will it be structured? Well, when you go in the door in 2022, you'll probably be asked firstly which three picture stories and role plays you've done. However, aside from that, the general questions that you'll get at the start of the exam will be wie heißen sie? Wie ist ihre Prüfungsnummer? And when you're answering this question, be clear and concise, have it well rehearsed. Meine Prüfungsnummer ist and then read out the six digits. And be careful with 0, which is 0, and 1, which is 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Make sure you pronounce those accurately and well. You'll also be asked, haven't Sie Ihr Handy draußen gelassen? Which you can answer ja to. You should have left your phone outside. And also, sometime during the course of the exam, you'll be asked, möchten Sie über einen deutschen Text oder einen deutschen Film sprechen? And this is the question where you're asked if you'd like to talk about a German text or film that you've studied. And make sure you only answer this question and you only say ja yeah, if you have prepared a concise and accurate paragraph on that. Otherwise, you may lose marks. Now, as I've just said, the picture stories will be the second part of the exam and the role plays will be the third part. But in this video, I want to give you my tips on role plays first because I believe that role plays are the easiest part of the German oral exam to prepare for and to do really well in. So my first tip with the role plays is really just learn them. In my view, they're the easiest 30 marks. It's 30 marks out of 400. They are possibly one of the easiest 30 marks that you can get in the Leaving Cert. It's no secret that if you memorize the C part, the, the part that you are expected to say in the role play, you can do really, really well. 27, 28 or 29 marks out of 30. So that is the first piece of advice I would give is just go and learn your part for the role play and learn it well and you'll be thankful you did. My second tip is to make sure you fulfill your tasks. 20 marks out of 30 in the role play will be for fulfilling tasks. Generally there's five paragraphs and in each paragraph there are four little tasks that you need to fulfill. It might be something like greet the policeman, describe the dog and you might get two points or two tasks uh, in, in the description. But make sure you fulfill those tasks. And what are those tasks? Well, generally, they're the bold parts of the candidate's card. So you might wonder, you, you'll be getting this candidate's card, you might wonder, wonder why some parts are in bold. And the reason is because those are the tasks. Make sure you fulfill those tasks and you fulfill them accurately. The third tip I would give is just to watch your pronunciation. Some words, if you mispronounce them, you will not get the mark, even the, the task mark, you will not get that mark for it. A good example uh, would be the word Mitglied. Der Hund ist wie ein Familienmitglied. A lot of students would mispronounce that and pronounce it as Mitglied, which is incorrect. And what I always say to students is when E and I go walking, the second one does the talking. This is the tip I learned uh, from another teacher along the way. And it's a great way to think about it because in German, when you have a word like Eis, E-I-S, you pronounce it as an I sound because in that E and I diphthong, the I comes second, so you pronounce it ice. Whereas with a word like Mitglied, it's M-I-T-G-L-I-E-D, so you pronounce it Mitglied, uh, which means member. Fourth tip I would give is listen to the examiner. It is a role play, it's a conversation, and sometimes the examiner might phrase something differently than you expect it. So for example, when they say, they maybe give you advice in the conversation Hund verloren, they might say rufen sie den Tierschutz an. And if you just say ja or a nine, it's, it's not really natural. It would be better in, when they give a command like that, it would be better to say something like gute Idee, das mache ich. Or if they asked it as a question, uh, then it would be differently and you could answer ja or a nine. So just listen very carefully to the examiner. No matter what you may have learned or prepared or memorized, make sure that you're listening carefully to the examiner and that it's a natural conversation. Finally, with the role plays, my fifth tip would be expect a curveball. It can happen that the examiner will say something or look for more information and you really haven't expected this. In such cases, I would say be positive. Stay buoyant, stay upbeat, and most of all, stay accurate. 
Remember that at the end of the day, when it comes to the role play, you want to stay as accurate as possible, keep your German as good as possible, and that way you'll do your very best and get your very best mark. Now, when it comes to picture stories, I have five other tips, but before I get into those, I just like to mention firstly about the project, the project, if you're not doing your uh, oral in 2022, you might be looking forward to 2023 or another year. I would advise you to consider strongly doing the project instead of the picture stories. That's what I did myself. My project, I think, was on Beethoven or maybe Bach. Uh, it was a musician. and. It's really nice, the project, because the, the intersection between your learning of the German language and your own interests is, is much closer. It coalesces a lot more clearly with the project than it would with learning five picture stories. So the project's a brilliant idea and you can prepare it over TY or fifth year and just have it there and ready to go. And it saves you doing all of this work around the further questions and the the future projection on these five picture stories. However, when it comes to the picture stories, perhaps you're doing these this year and it's too late to change. Well, the picture stories are still a great idea because the vocabulary that you prepare for the picture stories will help you going into the rest of the exam because there are many different themes that are laced throughout the picture stories. My first tip with the picture stories is on your marks. And what I mean by that is know your marks. Know what the marks are going for. There are 10 marks for telling the story. There are 10 marks for explaining the pictures and giving a future projection. And then there are 10 marks for a question on a wider or a related theme. So make sure you know what those marks are for. Secondly, I would say get set go or get to the point quickly when it comes to telling the story. It really is important to have a nice, cohesive, detailed account of the story ready that you're confident to tell, that you're waiting to tell, that's colourful and that's nice and that's accurate. And if there are huge long pauses, the examiner will move you on. So make sure that you know this part of the picture story well, that you've it well rehearsed. And one little tip I would give is if you're finding it hard to learn off the whole story for pictures one to six, maybe you know picture one and two well. I would say whenever you come to practice that picture story, especially in these final days, start on the sixth picture story, sixth picture rather, and move backwards to the fifth picture, to the fourth picture. So do it backwards. So when you come to prepare it then, you're not gravitating towards the first picture, which you probably know very, very well. Instead, start with the sixth one and then go to the fifth one and then the fourth one and so on. And you should find the overall quality of that picture story narration really improving. Thirdly, I would say, and this is especially directed towards stronger students, accuracy is critical. And by accuracy, I mean adjective endings, I mean genders, I mean verb endings. If you don't have those parts really accurate in your narration of the picture story, you will drop from, let's say, and even if they're generally accurate, but they're not all 100% accurate, you can drop from a 10 marks to a 9 or from a 9 to an 8 or an 8 even to a 7. By genders I mean for example saying der Stadt instead of die Stadt or saying er ist in die Stadt when it should be er ist in der Stadt. Examiners will pick up on that and if there are too many of those mistakes the, the general result will be to, to bring your picture story down. So be accurate and be accurate with your answers to questions and with your answers to future questions also. My fourth tip relates to the second part and to the, well, especially to the second part of the picture story question, where you're asked to give an explanation of the pictures or even the future projection question, and even actually to the third part. And it's simply this, that make the most of questions where you're asked to describe a picture. This is a very common question, where you're asked, beschreiben Sie das Zimmer? Oder was kann man in dem Zimmer sehen? And the reason I say make the most of this is because they're actually really easy to prepare for. Es gibt einen Tisch, man kann einen Kühlschrank sehen and so on. They're easy to prepare for, they're easy to give long answers for, to give list style answers and to be confident when you're giving those answers. If you're asked one of these description questions, do your very best in it. And also I would say when it comes to even follow-up questions, particularly on a, on a picture story like the Chanson Dirk Deutsch, picture story, you might even have the opportunity to, to hark back to some of the material you prepared for the general questions. For example, warum haben Sie Deutsch und nicht Französisch gewählt? You might be able to talk a little bit about language learning and how you found the German language easy to easier to pick up perhaps than French. The two things you want to avoid are long pauses and you also want to avoid improvisation that's not accurate and that will just lose you marks on the day. The fifth point I would say is just when it comes to the picture stories, make up your own questions and brainstorm. 
And by this I mean that when it comes to the picture stories, it's often very difficult to predict exactly what you'll be asked. In fact, it's impossible because there are as many questions you can be asked as there are examiners. And the solution to this is to have generic strategies available. So for example, to be able to describe pictures, to be able to talk about feelings, to be able to talk about what people are wearing, to be able to talk about how people look. These questions will never go wrong. And when you look at the picture stories, just yourself, you could say, well, what kind of questions do I think I might be asked on this picture story? And that's something that a parent or a brother or sister can also help you with by just looking at the pictures and saying, well, exactly what could you be asked in this picture story? And that will help you to prepare in a sense for the unseen element of this exam. So those were my top five tips for the role plays and the top five tips for the picture stories. As it comes now to the exam, which is probably within the next week or two, if you're doing it this year, Give it your very best shot. The amount of work you put in in this final week really does make a huge difference on the day of the exam. So stay positive, uh, give it your very best shot and you'll be glad you did. You can take a break and schöne Osterferien uh, after the exam. But from now until then, I wish you the very best. Viel Spaß, viel Erfolg.